Ooh. Man, we we are still taking that deep dive into <clears throat> this this industry controversy, if you will. And we're gonna dive on deeper. But first, intro. Yo, what's good, fam? It is your boy, Jason JV, saying welcome to another Jesse B reaction video. Yes, yes, y'all. <clears throat> I only got to see part of this video. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of tired at the time when I watched it, so I kind of fell asleep. But your boy's wide awake, and we are about to take a look at the next chapter in this um, music industry controversy, this mystery, if you will. Uh, th this video being called Sony Leaves Artist Completely Broke. Which sounds a lot like um, a certain person who tried to leave a certain country rapper broke, right? Damn it, Bobby. But failed in doing so because they got got. Just saying. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into this one by liking the hee hee. I just want to be very clear in the intro of this video. What I'm about to show you, number one, is going to piss some people off. And number two, it's liable to get taken down. Before I get into the brass tacks of this video, I just want to talk about something personal that just happened, which is oddly coincidental, being that I'm investigating mainstream music. I received a DM today, and this person sent me a screenshot of my comment section on one of my last videos. And it was a bot who was using and posing as me, using my photos, and trying to entice my followers to accept some sort of prize. Now, obviously, this is a bot. This is fake. It's not me. So if you're witnessing this, please don't respond. But and be advised uh, what happened to her. It's not really new. There's other YouTubers that have had this issue as well. Basically, the, 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 the bigger you get, the more popular you get, the more likely you're going to get someone that's going to make a fake account, you know, imitating your favorite YouTuber, whether it's, you know, again, an artist or any kind of content creator really on this platform. Someone's going to create a mock account and basically tell you that you've won a prize or whatever in order for you to claim your prize. You got to pay uh, an, an amount. And whoever made the bot for her <laughs> is the dumbest person in the world because why would you use that bot account on their account? <laughs> on, on this person's real, like legit account. Like you basically just gave yourself away. Bruh. But either way, though, if you've seen whether they actually give themselves away by actually going to the person that they're mocking or they go onto somebody else's channel because you just happen to follow this person or whatever the case. If it says that you want a prize in order to claim it, you got to pay this amount of money. You got to hit me up, you know, in the DMs or whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's not really the person. You know what I mean? In order for I mean, it, that should be a given because. Your favorite content creator will let you know if they're doing some kind of contest, a giveaway, but then even then, most likely they don't really ask you for money. You know what I mean? But anyway. This only proves my point that bots are real. Yep. Go back to the first video and listen in on that. The second thing that happened today, I got a lovely message from Instagram saying that one of my videos was going to be taken down. And so I looked into it and sure enough, it's a video from when I first started doing music. It was I Will, just two years ago. And the claim said that the video was being taken down for copyrights on a song that I own. Crazy thing, you know, the real kicker. Some people in my comments were saying like, oh, you should be able to fight that. There was no option. There was no fucking option to refute this claim. Yeah, Instagram is a platform that will not give you the option in um, disputing copyright issues. I've had um, some of my videos be taken down as well um, from Instagram, and yeah, they don't give you options in fighting back. YouTube, however, this is where YouTube is really good versus um, other platforms, at least as far as my knowledge is concerned. At least YouTube, they give you a fighting chance. They give you an opportunity to dispute copyright claims before anything happens to your content or your channel. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. YouTube, you, you, you get a W for that one. It was forcing my hand and forcing me to delete this video. How convenient. Sorry there. <laughs> I'm just really passionate about this. I own the copyrights. Instagram is taking down a video I made of my own song that I own the rights to because of a copyright claim. Don't believe me? There they are. 
right there on my wall. I keep all of my rights on my wall so that every day when I sit here at this computer and I work my fucking ass off for my music, I can look at all of my hard work. A visual representation. And, and this is why I stopped posting uh, videos with my music on Instagram because I'm just... I'm just tired of fighting with uh, certain social media sites. And um, and plus, Instagram is not really that kind of site. It's not really a video sharing site in the in the manner that YouTube is. You know what I mean? YouTube is the better platform when it comes to stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? YouTube, BitChute, Rumble. You know what I mean? Any site that's an actual video sharing site. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're really good with stuff like that. So yeah, I'm fucking mad. I'm fucking pissed. But I'm not afraid. I knew this was coming, but I'm not fucking afraid. So without further ado, that's my personal bullshit. Let's get into the meat and beans of this fucking video. I got a message from a couple of people in my comment sections and emails and whatnot asking me to look into this Michael Jackson evidence. What I'm about to show you is a video of Michael Jackson speaking out about Sony. He was previously an artist with the label and he talks about his experiences with them. I'm not gonna speak on his behalf, I'm just gonna allow him to talk to you today. Now keep in mind, all of the videos I'm about to show you in this, number one, I do not own the rights to. Number two, they have been known to be taken down numerous times. And number three, so that I don't risk this video getting taken down, I've taken the liberty of changing the voices in each of these videos. So they're either going to sound really high pitch or really low pitch. But consider this. Which is a smart move to make because that will then con will count as transformative work, which there qualifies as fair use. If you'd like to watch the full length videos to do your own research, I will link everything in the description below as always. So please don't take my word for this. Pay very close attention to this because this video is going to be extremely long winded. I really don't like to talk that much. I prefer to perform than talk. Yeah! I really want you to hear what I have to say. The tradition of great performers from Sammy Davis Jr. to James Brown to Jackie Wilson to Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly. The story is usually the same though, you know, these guys work really hard at their craft. True. But the story ends the same. They usually are broken, torn, and usually just sad. And the story is very sad in the end because that is true. That's why if you watch a lot of these um these biopics based on like artists and or bands, it's always the same story. They come up from humble beginnings, you know what I mean? And they're 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 living the life for a little while. Then all of a sudden they get into like like drugs or something. Something tragic happens in their lives, and they get into like drugs. Um, you know what I mean? And sometimes an artist, you know, they, 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 they die or they, um, you know, or they have trouble trying to, you know, come back or whatever, you know what I mean? And they, they either die through like, you know, a horrible accident or they self delete or, you know what I mean? It, all these biopics are all the same. You know what I mean? Bruh. The companies take advantage of them. They really do. And... Sony Sony be, being um, you know being the artist that I am um, at Sony I, I, I generated several billion dollars for Sony a billion so that 9.12 billion as of 2023 is completely false Mike Michael Jackson alone should have generated more than nine billion dollars. I mean, as MJ said himself, he generated several billions with a B, ladies and gentlemen, of dollars. Michael Jackson alone generated several billion. Yeah, this is fucking horseshit. Several billion, and um. They, they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing, and, and, I, and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer, myself, would outthink them. We can't let them get away with, with what they're trying to do, because now I'm a free agent. I'm, I, I just owe Sony one more album. It's just a box set, really. And so, um, with two new songs, which I've written, Ages ago, 
because every album that I record, I write like literally 120 songs every album I do. Damn. So I can do the box set and just give them any two songs. So, so I'm leaving Sony a free agent of owning half of Sony. <laughs> so, I own half of Sony's publishing in, and I'm leaving them, and they, they're very... That's right, I forgot he ended up owning half of Sony's publishing, which means every artist that pro that produces music under Sony, well, now um, MJ's um, estate owns, uh, owns at least half of the earnings, whatever it is that these artists produce, you know what I mean? Which means, you know, Eminem being one of the artists that this Michael in, in, in a song called Just Lose It, guess what? M, uh, Mike, MJ owns some of M's uh, catalog. <laughs> he owns like some of the uh, publishings for M's catalog. So, let's go. Very angry at me because of the, but, uh, I just, I just did good business, you know. So the way they get revenge is to try and destroy my album. Try to destroy his album in early two thousands. Sounds familiar, right? But right? Doesn't that sound a lot like a certain leader from Woke Neck Nation? Damn it, Bobby! Hmm, who try to destroy his Golden Goose's uh, social media presence to ultimately try to bankrupt him? Hmm. But uh, I've always said, you know, art, art, good art never dies. Uh, True. And Tommy Mottola is a devil. I want to make this very clear for those of you who might not know who Tommy Mottola is. Tommy Mottola at the time was a CEO or like the president of the music sector within Sony. He was previously married to Mariah Carey and Michael Jackson goes into that. But just so you know, Tommy Mottola, he refers to this man as devilish and the devil multiple times. Tommy is a devil. I'm not supposed to say what I'm gonna say right now, but I, I have to let you in on the secret. Oh, uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say, okay? Turn that off, please. You know what? No, what? I don't mind. Tape it. Mariah Carey, after divorcing Tommy, came to me crying, crying. She was crying so bad I had to hold her. And she said to me that this is an evil man and Michael, this man follows me, she said. He taps her phones and he's very, very evil and she doesn't trust him. And he is a horrible human being. And we, we have to... Hmm. So this is what would explain why Mariah got attacked by, again, said artist that I mentioned earlier, who dissed Michael Jackson, who also dissed Mariah Carey. Hmm. Hmm. Pieces are starting to add up, starting to make more sense. Continue our drive until he's terminated. We can't allow him to do this to great artistry. We just can't. That's just one video that's available on YouTube that Michael speaks out about Sony. Here's another one. This is very important because throughout the years, black artists have been taken advantage of completely. I'm going to tread very lightly when I say this because a lot of people have been led to believe that Michael hated his color and that he was trying to bleach his skin to be a white guy and he got a nose job and he did all the surgery to look like a white person. But why would he go out and speak on behalf of the African-American community. Which is not true. Michael did have a medical condition. I think it was called vit vit vitiligo. I think that's what it was called. I could be wrong. Um, but he did have a, a skin condition that caused his skin to be bleached. If that's the case. Something to think about. And it's time now that we have to put a stop to this incredible, incredible injustice. And uh, like uh, Mrs. Sharpton was saying, 
people from James Brown to Sammy Davis Jr., some of the real pioneers that, uh, that inspired me to be the entertainer that I am. Which, by the way, shout out to James Brown. May he rest in peace. I grew up listening to James Brown because my dad's a big James Brown fan. So I grew up on James Brown amongst uh, some other great uh, legendary artists that produce those classic uh, oldies music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's go. These artists are always on tour because if they stop touring, they totally reverse An artist who is generating billions of dollars for this company. Mm -hmm. If that artist does not remain on tour consistently will go completely broke. And uh, it's been, the record companies really, really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can. As Again, doesn't that remind you of a certain somebody? Hmm? Hmm? Especially the black artists. Sony, Tommy Mottola. Tommy Mottola is the president of the record division. He is a mean, he's a racist, and he's very, very, very devilish. Now, you can believe what you want, but he continues to say the word devilish. He continues to say the word devilish. Anyway. Devilish, evil. I mean, those are some very harsh, harsh terms. You don't have to just take Michael Jackson's word for it. Let's get into another almost equally popular artist, Prince. I know you haven't always loved the internet. Uh, how are you seeing progress right now with all of that can you use it to your advantage um it's a double-edged sword you know a lot of artists aren't getting paid full scale for their art and the internet because of downloading things like that is kind of like a black hole and it's hard to audit it's hard to get accounting and it's not that it's just about the money but it's about justice and fairness and when people say that they love you and they respect you, but at the same time take, you know, 80% of your earnings. 80% of your earnings? So the, he got a 2080 deal. And he's getting 20% off of his labor, off of his craft, his art. Not okay! Wow. Now here's a little thing that's kind of hard to decipher when Prince. This is why I say, you know, you know what I mean? New young up and coming artists. I hope you guys are watching her videos at least, and I hope you're watching my videos and any anyone else's videos that's raising awareness of how these guys operate. This is why Upchurch never signed with a major because he 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 knows about this. He knows about this. You know what I mean? A lot of artists choose to stay independent. And start up their own labels because they're not trying to do what these major labels are, are trying to do with these artists. You know what I mean? They don't have that whole, I brought you into this world, I'm going to take you out mentality. That's what these major labels are like. They have that mentality. This is why I said in my, one of my Easy Mill reactions for Easy Mill, I was hoping he would watch one of my videos. Because I, I said, dude, do not sign with a major. That's a big mistake because watch. Just watch. He may be on top of the world right now. He may be on cloud cloud nine right now. But don't be surprised if you see him travel down a very similar road that Eminem did. Where Eminem was on top of the world, right? He had all he had hit record after hit record after hit record. Then all of a sudden he disappears because he was having all these issues, right? He's these he he was a drug addict, right? And um he was struggling to find God and he found God all of a sudden, you know what I mean? And now boom, he's back and he's making um uh, all this all this newer music that is I'm sorry, but content wise, it is not as good as his older stuff. I mean, it is what it is. Don't be surprised if this if the similar thing happens to Easy Mill. I'm just saying. I'm not hoping for it. I don't want it to happen, but I'm just saying, just don't be surprised if it happens talking it's hard to decipher whether he's talking about the fan base who is illegally downloading the music is taking that revenue or if he's talking about the labels withdrawing that revenue then, and then expect you to fix your own communities and they'll probably edit all of this out but then again, that's that's the sharp part of the sword and we're at the wrong end of it right now so eventually with courageous people going out there and actually saying something and standing up for it i think we'll get some 
balance. That was Prince talking. Why don't we do someone who's a little bit more up to date in a completely different genre? Snoop Dogg. And before you know it, the artist is frustrated. How many artists do you hear complaining about? We don't make money off our YouTube video. We don't make money off our streaming. The label won't let me go. So is the label the bad guy or what? They're not the bad guys. It's the system that was created many years ago that they're not changing. Mm -hmm. don't give a fuck about you, me, him. Notice that whoever made this edit just put a picture depiction of the devil. And notice how Snoop Dogg realized what he was saying, kind of like backtracked a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He just protected all the major labels right now by saying they're not the devil. It's, oh, it's, the, it's the system that, that, that's, in, that's in place. Well, here's the thing. Who created that system? Somebody had to have created that system. So, come on, Snoop. What's the deal here, bruh? Bruh. Making dollars off of his album. How does that work, though? How, how is Michael Jackson not making money off his own music? Look, this shit up. Who takes that? The record label? It's called points and percentages and royalties and shit that you get for the record. So, for example, if they were selling Michael Jackson record Thriller for $9.99, right? How much money do you really think he made off of each copy of Thriller? And that shit sold the most records ever. He made a lot of money. But what you think the record labels made? They made all the money. If the artist is the one who everybody loves, he should be the one getting the finest. Perfect example, Taylor Swift. She ain't an old artist at all. She's quite new. What did she do? She remastered her album. Why? Because she wasn't making revenues off of that album. So again, we're getting painted this narrative by artists from completely different time periods and different genres that are talking about the same thing, about the artists not making the majority of the revenue, which is mind blowing because they are the ones who are generating the product. Now I'm gonna show you guys this other band. This is the final video I'm gonna be showing in this particular video. And that is Smashing Pumpkins. This is a rock band. I'm just gonna let them do the talking. This is a clip from the Joe Rogan podcast. And let's just go ahead and roll it. Struggle to get the contract, and then the contract is sort of, you know, the indentured servitude type of thing. We, our first contract was seven albums, essentially 14 years. So I signed that contract when I was 23. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm signing, at 23 years old, I'm signing a contract that's supposed to take me into 37. You're signing a contract for more than half your life. And, and if you look at the shelf life of most artists, it's four to... So they're basically anticipating your entire arc. So just to clarify what he's saying, you're a new artist and you just got signed. Notice the, the, the uh, terms that he used there. They're anticipating your entire arc, meaning their they're, odds are they're going to be able to tell that same story that they're able to tell with the majority of other artists. You know what I mean? Oh, here we go. We got this fresh face. You know what I mean? This fresh brand new band and or artist. You know what I mean? That's blowing up. You know what I mean? And releasing all these great hits. And then come the rise. With the rise comes the fall. They all experience the same, if not at least, similar fall. And some are able to come back from it. Some are not. That's just the harsh realities of the music industry, ladies and gentlemen. ...to this label. They're presenting you with information that's not only telling you how much you're going to make and all this other stuff and how long you're going to be working to the company but they're calculating how long you're going to be popular for mm -hmm. and they use that to their advantage to take advantage of you yes they do so you don't have any leverage you know other than that they want to sign you you sign the deal and then it becomes this weird dance of like can i sustain success yeah if you get success and you have leverage, they'll get out of your way because you're making them a lot of money. But the minute you're not making them as much money, then they step in and they start playing these Jedi mind tricks on you. We know what to do. You know, the public's going to forget about you. I mean, I've heard all these things. So all in all, each of these clips, like I said before, is from completely different genres, completely different time periods, and completely different platforms. They're all saying the same thing, that people are getting taken advantage by these labels. Mm -hmm. And not only that, that they're backed by the devil. So what does that say for us? That says for us, they've created a system and a machine that has a capability of running these artists' lives. So if they're able to control the artists, they're able to control you. Again, it's that mentality of, we brought you into this world, we'll take you out. 
and how you see it and what gets told. So then that leaves us with independent artists. How do you compete? What do you do? Where do you go? It could seem so hopeless as you unpack this information and you see the big picture here. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in my next video. All right, y'all, so that's pretty much the end of this video. I can't wait to hear what she has to say in the next one. I mean, yeah, this is just some rather, rather interesting um, information that is coming out. Uh, but again, it's something that it's not really that new to me. Um, and of course, not new to many of um, more established artists. You know what I mean? Artists have been around. Um, and of course, a lot of indie artists. You know, there's a reason why Insane Clown Posse, I'll use them as an example. There's a reason why they decided to go independent and start up their own label. There's a reason why Twisted decided to start, to start up their own label stay independent you know what i mean there's a reason why tech nine decided to go independent start up his own label even though now technically his label is now on that mainstream level so he is technically mainstream now i'm just saying a lot of artists that are independent you know what i mean they choose to stay independent for for a reason and it's a very wise reason and this is why i encourage new young up and coming very talented artists you know, be 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 it that you're 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 a solo player or you're part of a band, stay independent. Don't sign with a major. Because you're basically making a deal with the devil. Right. And it's it's not a very well hidden secret. I mean that again, that's that information is not new information. That's that's something that's been out for for a while and it's been on public display for years. For years, like I said, look, go back and watch your favorite band, artist, you know what I'm saying, that has a biopic. Go watch La Bamba. Go watch the Selena movie. Go watch, uh, who else has biopic? The Notorious. Um, the Temptations. Look at all their stories. James Brown has a biopic. Go watch that. Elton John's biopic. They all had that same story. Oh, they start out hot. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're doing great. They're on top of the world. Once they reach their peak, here comes the fall. Again, that some can come out of and some can't. Their stories are eerily similar. Why is that? It's because, you know, again, it's a system that Snoop addressed. It's a system that, that that's in place. They're pre-planning your story arc. Anyways, y'all, that's enough for this video. Y'all know the deal. You want to watch this video uninterrupted as you would like. Hey, y'all know how to support Jesse B. Go and uh, click on the link in the description down below. And then, of course, if you're, you're down with this channel over here, y'all know how to support this channel. Do all the YouTube thing things. Till the next one, y'all. Bless one. All right. Peace. Jason JV on YouTube. Uh, what's up with you, Jason JV? What up, Jason? JV. Just sending love, peace, and blessings to you. JC, you are my homeboy, my guy. Don't call me guy, pal. Don't call me buddy, pal. Much love to you, JV. Chris Calico. Cali, baby. Oh. What's up, JV? My name's Jimmy Badass. What happened to that dude with a little trigger? Who's saying what's up, Jimmy? Keep your motherfucking head up. Uh, uh, I don't know why you're sad. If you're sad, if you're sad, if you're sad, if you're happy. I'm gonna be too happy. I'm gonna be expecting shit. It's like it occurs all the time. So you ready to be on the swerve. So subscribe, tap the little bell, turn on the notifications, and if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it, yeah!